Hey, this is Jerry from Bliss Studio, and in this particular tutorial, we're going to set up interactions for our player, and then with the game object, we'll be able to control what's happening on our screen. And the way I'm setting this up is that we'll be able to use this type of interaction over and over throughout the game. So if you're ready to get interacting, let's go. Okay, so here we are in Unity, and I want to make an interactable. Now, there's a lot of different ways that we're gonna make interactables. And in this particular case, when my player goes up to this rune stone, and let's just move out of the way so we can actually see it, I want there to be some dialog box that pops up. Now, in the last two videos, one I did a dialog box and the other I did a second camera. So I wanna actually be able to use both of those in this interaction. So let's go ahead and get started. First, I actually need my interactable to have a collider. So currently the rock actually has collider on it, but the interactable, the game object that contains the rocks does not. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add a sphere collider. And I have that on the game object now, but I need to make it a little bit bigger because I want within a certain radius of this game object, when the player comes up to that game object, then I can send a message. So I just need to make that big enough so that we can actually come up and trigger that interaction. So with the sphere collider, I do need to make this a trigger. So we're gonna do a trigger type event with this collider, okay? So our interactable is not completely set up yet. Currently it's untagged. Now what I'm gonna do with my tag is I want a tag that I can have as a passive interaction. So anytime that the player comes up and interacts with this, I don't necessarily need the player to actually touch or do anything specific with this game object. I want to have different types of objects be able to use this same passive interaction. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and give a tag of passive interact. Now this is just a name, you can name it anything you want, but in this case, that's what I'm gonna call it because I want to be able to have lots of different types of objects use this same type system. So I'm gonna go ahead and I need, I created that tag, so now I need to actually go and tag the game object. So passive interact. So there we go, so those are set up. Now I need to go to my player. Currently my player only has one Playmaker FSM on it and I need to go ahead and add an additional Playmaker FSM. So we're gonna create a template so that we can then use this over and over again on any passive game object that we come in contact with. So in this case, we need to go ahead and create a new Playmaker FSM. So I'm gonna just do it right here, add FSM, new FSM. And we're gonna go ahead and just label the FSM so that we can differentiate it from our player move FSM. All right, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and waiting for trigger. Okay, so in this first state, what we're gonna do is just continually wait to see if we have connected with a passive interactive object. So in this case, we're gonna do a trigger event. So of the owner, which is the player, anytime we have come in contact with a tag of passive interact, we wanna send an event. So we're gonna create a new event and we'll just call this passive interact. The other thing that we need to do is we're gonna go ahead and store the collider. So this is whatever game object that we collided with, tell us what that game object is, and we're gonna store that in a variable. So we're gonna store that variable here as a new variable, and it's going to be whatever we collided with. So game object. This is gonna store whatever game object we collided with, okay? So let's now go over to a new state, and in this state, we're gonna send event. So the way I'm creating this is so that we can send an event to any game object that is a passive interact game object. So we're gonna go ahead and do a send event by name. And in this case, we're going to choose a game object's FSM and the game object is going to be a specific game object. Over here, we detected a game object and we're storing that game object. And then in the send event by name, we're going to send an event to that game object. So whatever game object this is, send an event. So the event we're gonna send is passive interact. Okay, cool. So that is done for the player and we'll be able to actually use this over and over again. 
All right, so once we've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a finished event. Go off to a new state. I'm gonna do just a short wait. And the reason I'm adding that short wait is just so this doesn't go back and loop on itself. So we'll do a wait. Add that, I'm just gonna make that like 0.2 seconds. We're gonna also do a finished event and then go right back to waiting for trigger. Okay, so that's gonna take care of any passive interaction that our player connects with. All right, so now we need to go ahead and go back to our rune rock. This is where we're going to set up what specifically, if you interact with that rune rock, what happens. So let's go ahead and add an FSM. And in this, we're going to have this just waiting. So we're not gonna actually do anything in this first state. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to go ahead and create a new event, and we're gonna call this passive interact. And then we need to go ahead and add a global transition of passive interact. So anytime our player comes in contact with this, we're sending an event out to this game object of passive interact. We'll immediately go to this passive interact state. There's a lot of, lot of stuff that we want to happen in this state. So there's a dialog box from the last video, and I wanna be able to use that dialog box. So what we're gonna do is we need to go ahead and uh, create a string that we can add to the dialog box. So we're gonna set a string value, and this is that global string value that we have for our dialog. So I'm gonna to go to my global, and there's a dialog text. And now we need to choose what the string value is. So, Okay, so I'm setting that that string value, I also need to set the image. We're gonna specify a game object, and we're gonna specify that we're gonna use our global dialog image, and then I need to go ahead and create that image, and I have my sprite here that is my rune rock that I used from the last video. I'm just gonna drop that right in there. So we're gonna send to our global variables the text and the sprite. The next thing I need to do is to send an event to my dialog box to say, hey, use this information. So we're gonna do a send event by name again. So a game object's FSM to a specific game object. That game object is going to be our dialog manager. And we're gonna send an event of open dialog. Of course, our dialog box is going to grab the information that we've just stored in our global variable and then open the dialog box and display it. Okay, so that's gonna set up our dialog box. Now, the next thing I need to do is, I don't want this trigger to be continually interacted with. Once I have used it once, I don't wanna use it again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the sphere collider from my rune rock, drag that down in, and what we're gonna do is just to set property, and we're just gonna have it enabled, and then have that set value as unchecked and that means that's gonna turn that collider off. So we'll actually only be able to interact with this once. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna actually switch my camera. In one of my previous videos, I set up two virtual cameras. I have the virtual camera that is the free look camera around the player, but then I also have a second camera that is a side view. I want to change my camera when I open my dialog box. So here I need to go ahead and open up my cameras. I'm gonna to go to my side view camera, just drag that down in, and I'm gonna to go to my Cinemachine set property. And the property that I want to set is the priority. My free look camera is, it has a priority of 10. We just need to set our side look camera to have a higher priority so that we then switch to that camera. So let's go ahead and set our priority to be 11. The other thing that's gonna happen is that we don't want the player to continually be able to move while the dialog box and the interaction is happening. So we need to actually disable our player move FSM. So let me go ahead and just lock this FSM so that it stays up. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my player and then I'm gonna take my player move FSM. Let's go ahead and just drag that component down and I'm gonna do state machine enable FSM and we're just going to disable. Okay, so that's gonna turn that off. So we're no longer gonna be able to control the movement of our player while we're interacting with this game object. And then if we are moving up to this game object and we're moving and I disable that FSM, then that means we're no longer setting the animation speed or the float value of our animation. 
So our animation could be stuck in a running state or a walking state. So what we want to do is to set our float value of our player's animator to zero. So that way when the player is interacting, it's just in the idle state. So we're going to set animator float and we need to choose a specific game object. That game object is our player with the animator attached. And the parameter that we're going to choose is our idle walk run. And we're just going to set that value to zero. There we go. So now we should have everything that we need to make this thing interact. So let's go ahead and give it a test real quick to see what happens. As soon as I get to my rune stone, I am now triggering my dialog box. I'm adding text to my dialog box. I am also setting an image for the box as well. And I'm changing my camera. So let's go ahead and hit the close button. And I'm no longer able to move my player. And that's because we turned the player move off. So what we need to do is to also detect if we've hit that input button. So let's go ahead and add that real quick. Player input button event. And the button event that we are detecting is on a specific game object, which is our player. That's where our player interactions are. And the action that we need to perform or check for is our player close. So we need to go ahead and is a pressed event. So let's go ahead and do new event. And I'm going to just call this reset. Cool, we need to add that transition. And then if we look at our player enable movement, we have an option here for reset on exit. So if I exit this state, it's actually going to re-enable that Playmaker FSM. So I don't need to do anything else to that specifically. But let's go ahead and go over to a new state the one thing that I do need to do is to reset the priority of my camera. So here, we're gonna also choose where we set our priority of our camera. I'm gonna copy that action. So it's, we're setting the priority of our second camera. We're just going to add that in and we're gonna change the priority back down to nine. So here we are setting the priority of that camera so we can go to the second camera we are setting that priority of that camera back to nine. So we're gonna go back to our free look camera. And then that's it. That's all we need to do. Let's just do reset for a name on that state. And let's give it a play real quick. And here we go. We're gonna go up to our interaction. Again, we're causing our dialog box to pop up. And then when I close, I'm resetting. My camera goes back and now I'm back able to move and go up the path. To my imminent doom, oh no. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and it's something you can use for your game. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there so you know when the next tutorial is available. Until next time.